Hello and welcome to Ingression, the only series that gives you the best tips, tricks, and information on the game that we all love, and soon you will too, Ingress. I am your lovable enlightened instructor, Incredible Hulk, aka Colin Williams. Now today we're going to cover Ingress 102, protecting your portals. If you've either never played the game Ingress, or perhaps you're a newer player, the Ingress 100 series covers all the basic information that you need to play like a pro. But if you haven't watched Ingress 101 or completed the in-game training yet, go do that first because you're going to need that knowledge before we cover the stuff in this episode. And apologies if you watched Ingress 101, we'll actually be pushing a couple of topics we said we cover in this episode into future 100 series episodes because there is just so much that we need to go over. So let's go ahead and start fully deploying the info for Ingress 102. Now, after watching Ingress 101, You've got these great portals and fields that you set up, but there is more that needs to be done with them. So to keep your portals safe or to make them more useful, you want to use what are known as portal modifiers or mods. Now applying a portal modifier is easier than my X. Just click on the portal you're at and then click mods. There are four total mod slots on a portal and it doesn't matter which slot you use but each agent can only apply a maximum of two mods. And once a mod slot is filled, it cannot be changed or upgraded. So pick your mods carefully. Now there's four types of mods. You have defensive mods, offensive mods, hacking mods, and linking mods. Now linking mods allow you to increase the maximum linking distance. One rare link amp increases the distance by 200%, and two link amps raises that 200% to 250%. And the super rare awesome mod called the SoftBank Ultra Link Amp not only increases the distance, but also the number of links you can send from your portal, as well as the natural portal defense that links provide. So by default, although you can link an unlimited number of portals into a portal, you can only send eight links out from a portal. So when you're standing in a portal, you can only link to eight other portals from the portal that you're standing at. However, with the SoftBank link amp, you can send an extra eight links out per SoftBank Ultra Amp that is in one of the mod slots, up to a total of 40 links with four Ultra Link Amps. Now the SoftBank Ultra Link also increases the link distance. So one SoftBank increases it by 500%, and two SoftBanks raises that 500% to 625%. And links uh, also provide this natural thing that's called damage mitigation, where when someone attacks your portal, it absorbs part of the damage from that attack. One link normally mitigates 16% of the damage, and two mitigates 28%, and so on and so on. You can see the numbers in the chart over there. And go and pause the video if you need to to study it for a second. But the SoftBank Ultra Link Amp also increases that damage mitigation currently by 50%. So now one link mitigates 24% damage, two links mitigate 42% damage, and so on and so on. So lots of links and lots of damage protection with that special rare item. Now uh, on over to hacking mods, they're going to change how many times and how fast you can hack a portal. So by default, you're limited to four hacks on the same portal every four hours. And those hacks must be spaced at least five minutes apart. But the heatsink portal modifier decreases what's known as cooldown time, so that everyone can hack it quicker than every five minutes. So when you place a heatsink down, it's also going to do a thing where it resets how many hacks the portal thinks you've done in that four hour window. So even if you've done what's called burning out a portal, by hacking it the maximum number of times for that four hour window, if you place a heatsink, you'll start a new four hour window and be able to hack it all over again for the maximum number of times. Fortunately, that's only when you first place the heatsink and it only resets the window for the player who places it. For the first heatsink that you place, it's gonna decrease the cooldown time to four minutes or 20% faster per hack if it's a common heatsink, 2.5 minutes or 50% faster for the rares, and down to 90 seconds or 70% faster for the very rare heatsinks. 
Uh, just like a game of Jenga that you bought at a dollar store, hacking mods don't stack and add up perfectly. So two commons won't give you 40% faster hacking. Instead, it only gives you 28% faster hacking, which is another reason to choose mods so carefully. Now the multi-hack does exactly what it sounds like it does. So it increases the default number of times that everyone can hack a portal every four hours to more than just the standard four. So a common increases it by four hacks, a rare by eight hacks, and a very rare by 12 hacks. But remember, they don't stack up well. So two commons won't give you a total of 12 hacks, only 10. So make sure, once again, choose your mods carefully. Now offensive mods are going to help hurt enemies when they either hack your portals or do damage to one of the resonators. So the force amp offensive mod will increase the strength with which the portal will attack your enemies naturally. 200% for one and 250% for two. The turret is going to increase the frequency of how often it attacks and the chance of a critical hit that drains massive amounts of XM for them. So 200% frequency for one, 250% for two. And then lastly in the mods, we have defensive mods. So shields are gonna help absorb damage from attacks and they are the one mod that does stack perfectly. So common shields absorb 30% damage per shield, rares absorb 40% damage, very rare 60%, and axis shields absorb 70%. But although shields stack perfectly, there is a maximum amount of total damage that a portal defense can absorb, and that is 95%. So two rare shields will provide 80% mitigation, but two axis shields, instead of providing 140% damage mitigation, will only provide 95%. So why put multiple high-level shields on something? Well, when people are attacking your portal, the mods will actually just fly off at random. So at least if you have two Axis shields and one flies off, you still have 70% mitigation left on that portal. And shields also have an unlisted number known as stickiness. So the more rare the shield is, the harder it is for your enemy to knock it off while attacking which is yet another good reason to use shields that are more rare. So what happens if someone starts attacking any of the portals that you want to keep alive? Because it's still receiving at least 5% damage even with full shield and link mitigation. Well, then you're going to need to protect it by doing what's called recharging the portal and keeping the energy up. Now recharging takes energy from your XM bar and gives it to the portal. And that's where the portal key comes in handy because if you have a portal key, then you can recharge the portal even if you are not located at it. So in that notification bar where it alerts you to the attack, you can click on the portal's name. Now, even if you don't have a key, you can still remotely view the portal. But if you have that key, it'll also give you the option to recharge the portal with your energy. But you can only charge a portal within a certain distance from your current location. And the maximum distance is determined by your current level. So it's your level times 250 kilometers. So a level two player can charge a portal up to 500 kilometers away. And a level eight player can charge a portal 2000 kilometers away. But there is also something called range efficiency. So hitting the recharge button takes 1000 XM from your energy bar, but the portal only gets the percent of that energy times the range efficiency. So if you're at a portal, you get 100% efficiency. It gets all 1,000 of those XM. But if you're using a key to charge a portal from far away, your efficiency can go as low as 50% and only be getting 500 of that XM. And you must have a minimum of 1,000 XM in your XM bar in order to recharge. But if the resonators don't need the full 1,000 XM, then that extra piece will go back into your XM bar. And you can also use what's called the quick recharge option. That's where you hold down the recharge all button till the bars at the top of the button spread to the edge. And then when you release the button, it will drain as much from your XM bar as it can and give it to the portal. The quick recharge can actually use up to 15,000 XM when you're in the higher levels. But starting out, you won't have that much available since this is the maximum XM that your bar can hold per level. Now, you can also recharge a portal controlled by your faction at any time as well by accessing the key from the inventory in the Ops menu. 
which we'll start covering in our next episode, Ingress 103. So go ahead and hop on over to that video next and make sure to click that subscribe button to make sure that you're always getting updates on the latest videos and tips. And you can also find me anywhere on the internet and add me as well if you need some tips here and there, I'll try to shoot you back. Otherwise, in the meantime, feel free to explore the playlist and learn more after, of course, you've checked out the rest of the 100 series. And as always, make sure that you go out there, play, destroy, deploy, and enjoy.